The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. Thus says the Lord, my righteousness draws near speedily. My salvation is on the way. My arm will bring justice to the nations. Will you join me in singing, Arise, the kingdom is at hand. Shall we pray? We join our hearts and minds to worship you. Please be present with us now. Help us reflect on your beauty and holiness in this Advent time of waiting. Help us repent of our sins. Help us renew our love for you, for each other, and for the poor and suffering. Amen. <clears throat> And now would you greet one another in the peace of Christ, or if you're worshiping at home alone, extend your thoughts and remembrances uh, to your neighbors. <clears throat> and now it's uh, time for our announcements, and Elaine will do that at this time. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, as you can see, it's a change of plan. So, of course, we were supposed to have our, our uh, all services planned in the fellowship hall, and here we are in our beautiful sanctuary again. And if you don't know why, the reason why is Pastor David has tested positive for COVID, as well as our organist, Matt Wilson. And so um, I want to ask all of you to please pray for Pastor David and his family, as well as Matt and his family and actually Jay Warren as well, Jay and his wife and family, um, all three in this last week have tested positive. So um, a few changes to announce if any of you got the bulletin in the, we call it the big bundle, um, there's a few changes that I wanna let you know. Um, obviously we're not having church today in the fellowship hall and we're also not going to have the budget meeting. It has been rescheduled for um, December 20th, and we will have an all, um, all services again at one time in the fellowship hall that was planned like today, with it following with the budget meeting at 11 or approximately 11. A couple of other things to let you know, we are having communion today, so please, if you have your, um, what does Pastor David say, is get your bread ready, you don't have to have wine, um, and, and join us today in, in our communion. Um, I'd like to thank 
And I, I read this, if I read this right, if not, Paul, you correct me, Reverend Paul Seberg for joining us and, and being our, our guest pastor today. As you can tell, it was kind of last notice and we really are appreciative and grateful for you. And also for Raina Brown, who is our guest organist today. We also will have special music later and it's gonna be a treat. I can tell you I heard him practicing. Joshua File is here with us today to share his immense talent. So um, I wanted to thank all of them. Um, also today, um, we were collecting, the Women's Guild were collecting or are collecting cookies for both the shut-ins as well as the servicemen. So um, I can only imagine that many of you were planning to bring some cookies today when you came to the service. Um, what I talked to Susan Straub and she will be here beginning at one today. If you'd like to drop by, bring your cookies or um, Holly said she'll be here at eight tomorrow as long as they have the cookies by 9 a.m. They're gonna begin packaging cookies at 9 a.m. So please bring cookies, they still plan to do that. Uh, let's see, what else? Advent Bible study, I'm not certain on. Stay, stay tuned for that. I'll let you know, and kind of depending on Pastor David, how he's feeling. I, I texted with him this morning a couple of texts, like what orders, you know, which candles do I light? You know, those things that I probably should know and probably learned in confirmation, sorry. Um, the Jansen family, if you're listening. But um, what, what, um, what I did learn from him, though, is that he's still feeling pretty well, but does have some aches and pains, um, a little bit of achiness, still no fever. Um, what was the one other thing he told me? Fatigue. That's the common thing I've heard is some fatigue. And Sue, although she hasn't tested positive yet, she's starting to have a little loss of taste and smell. So that seems to be that, that key ingredient I've heard oftentimes, but not always. This is a strange virus that we're dealing with here. So many symptoms. Um, she did, I also texted with Sue this morning and I asked her if there was anything. We are planning next Sunday on the 13th, we're gonna have a combined service across the 8, 10, and 11.30, all at 10 a.m. here in the sanctuary to show our video Christmas play. So keeping with the COVID times, we have to do everything slightly different and we will do that as well this, um, for this, but they're all getting ready and sending in their videos. For those of you who have not sent your video in yet, she does need it by end of day today. So get those ready. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Oh, I wanted to highlight that the junior youth, they're collecting hats and there's a tree, as you come into the fellowship hall, um, it's on the left. So um, please bring in hats, mittens, gloves. I think they'll take anything and they'll distribute it to um, EVSC where there are kids, kids in need. You have until December 24th to bring those in. And I also wanted to highlight the Christmas Eve service. So um, as you know, we have four different times and we're looking for reservations. The update for this week though is that both the 5 p.m. and the 7 p.m. are full at this time. So uh, please get your reservations in. We still have 9 p.m. and 11 p.m. And as I told Holly, you know, we could look for some flexibility if, if no one's interested in that time, potentially a different time, but not later than 11. I'm certain of that. <laughs> so I think that's the main things. Um, there's plenty other announcements, but I don't want to take up all the time this morning. But thank you again. Prayers for the Peterson, the Wilsons, and the Warrens, and so many others. I just don't think there's any of us that don't know somebody that's been impacted. So prayers for many families. Thank you, Jay. Or no, Paul. I was stuck on the Warrens. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Elaine, for giving those announcements. I don't like doing announcements, so I was very, very appreciative that you were <laughs> here to do that today. Uh, now it's our time to, uh, to go to the Lord in prayer. And um, we want to lift up those uh, Elaine's already mentioned and others upon your heart. We also 
have had uh, people ask for prayers for um, Mar Margie Scott's friend and uh, husband, Mike Lancaster, and he's on a ventilator for COVID. So we want to remember him also, Mike Lancaster, and then Lori Yeager, who's uh, receiving therapy at home for a stroke and cancer chemo has been stopped. So we remember Lori Yeager and Mike Lancaster. And then we also have a good friend, Joe Pack, who's been fighting um, pancreatic cancer uh, for over a year now, I guess, and he's having a, um, some major chemo tomorrow. So we uh, requested prayers uh, for him, Joe, Joe Pack. And um, I think then we'll go to uh, the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we come to you today in this beautiful sanctuary with these beautiful flowers and the Christmas tree and all decorated so beautifully. But we're reminded of what Pastor Dave said, that these are just signs. These aren't the real thing. You are the real thing. You are our beautiful Savior. And so these point to you, Lord. And so we do thank you for the opportunity to worship to you today. Most of us, of course, at home or um, in cars or someplace else, but we're all together in spirit, and we pray, Lord, that you'll bless this time together. May your Holy Spirit uh, fill our hearts and minds and open our hearts to receive what you have for us today, Lord. And I do pray that, um, um, that you'll anoint my lips, that I might speak uh, words that will be uh, true to you and to, uh, to your word. And Lord, we do lift up those who are in a very difficult time now with this pandemic, Lord, and, and uh, so many people are sick and, and with COVID and other conditions too, Lord. And uh, we do bring them before you at this time, Lord. We lift up especially Mike and Lori and Joe and others, uh, Pastor Dave and Sue and, and um, our organist, Lord, and then Jay and uh, Warren and his wife and others, Lord, that we've mentioned and many upon our hearts at this time. And we ask, Lord, that you would bring healing to them, encourage them, strengthen them, Lord, and be with them. And be with all, Lord, who are suffering this day for, for whatever reasons. We know there are many people throughout the world that are suffering from hunger and, and illness and lack of clothes and shelter. We read about it in the newspaper all the time, Lord. So we ask that our hearts go out to them. Help us, Lord, to do what we can uh, during this Advent season, and not only now, but during the whole year, Lord. Help us to be uh, kind and merciful and gentle with those in need. Help us, Lord, to realize how much you have blessed us. We've just been through Thanksgiving, Lord, and and um, but help us to be thankful all year round. And now, as during this Advent season, Lord, as we prepare our hearts and uh, for your coming, Lord, to celebrate your your birth, remind us again, Lord, that you are coming again in all your glory. You're coming as a victorious King and and king of the universe, Lord, and you're coming, and you're coming as our Savior. And I pray, Lord, that each one of us uh, might be aware and excited about that, Lord, because you're in our hearts, and help us to share that good news with others. You are the hope, Lord. You're the only hope that we have in our world, Lord. So forgive us our sins, Lord, and uh, watch over us and keep us in your love. We pray also that you'll uh, be with all the our nation, Lord. Be with our nation's leaders. Be with now as there's a transition in government, Lord. We pray that that will go smoothly, Lord. We pray that um, uh, our enemies, nobody would take advantage of that, Lord. And then also we pray for all those um, in leaders, in leadership in whatever way, uh, federal, state, local governments, and be with the first responders, be with our police, be with our firemen, be with all those uh, hospital workers, Lord, not just doctors and nurses, them, but also everyone who works in nursing homes, all those that are on the front lines, Lord, especially with the COVID, Lord. We lift them up and uh, ask that you protect them, watch over them, those that have gotten ill, restore them, Lord, and encourage them 
And it's a time there's great fear, Lord, and we pray that you'll help us to have faith, to trust in you, Lord, and um, help us to be careful, help us to do those things that we should, and we know we should, Lord, and we pray that you'll help us then through this time. And we're thankful, Lord, now that looks like a vaccine, vaccines are on their way, Lord, and we just pray that they'll come quickly. We pray that they'll be safe to use, Lord, and we pray that this can help to end this pandemic, Lord. It is a very difficult time. Be with those that are lonely, be in, and be with those that are depressed, be with those, Lord, uh, that are isolated and uh, cannot see others, nursing home people and so forth, Lord, how difficult it is. So we pray, Lord, that you'll help us to pray, to continue to pray, and to reach out in whatever way we can to those in need. And again, Lord, thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for giving your life that we might have life. You are our Savior, our crucified and risen Lord. And we give you praise and thanks this day as we worship you. And now let us pray together the prayer you taught us, Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we have a special treat. Joshua Files is going to be playing for us Christmas alto saxophone medley. Is that the title? That's the title of it? Yes. Thank you so much for your willingness to do that. We enjoy, I always enjoy hearing the saxophone. It's a beautiful instrument. I don't play it, but it's beautiful. Thank you.
Thank you, Josh. That was beautiful. Mm. I hope you clapped at home, too. <laughs> mm. And now it's uh, time for our offering. We ask God to bless our offering for this ministry to our community and through our missionaries uh, throughout the world. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Bless these gifts and multiply them to your purposes and for your glory. Amen. Mm. Our Old Testament lesson today is from the Gospel of Isaiah not the gospel, sorry, the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, beginning at the first verse. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, and every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all mankind together will see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken." A voice cry says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. You who bring good tidings to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good tidings to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power, and his arm rules for him. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. Amen. And then our gospel, our gospel lesson, New Testament lesson, is found in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, beginning at the first verse. The beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. And so John came, baptizing in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the, whole, for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to see him, confessing their sins. They were baptizing, baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you 
with the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless these readings to us today. Amen. <clears throat> And now it's a time for our children's message. And you're, and we're all we're all children today. So whatever your age, you're a child, and so <laughs> pay attention. <laughs> That's the old teacher in me. <clears throat> um, I think Pastor Dave, we just uh, listened to his sermon uh, for last Sunday, uh, last night, and uh, he did talk about this too. But I thought it was interesting. I was going to say something about the uh, the Advent uh, candles and how. Um, how we light them at, at, at Advent time. And there's four, four Sundays before Christmas, and there's four candles. And it uh, brings, uh, brings back memories to me, because when I was a child, and perhaps you too, uh, if you grew up in a Christian home, had an Advent wreath uh, in, your, in your house, and uh, we would light those uh, candles. I don't know if we did it every night. Uh, I don't remember for sure, but we always had uh, daily devotions. Dad was a uh, my mom was a stay-at-home mother. There were four of us kids at that time. Later on, after I left home, she had another one, but um, they did, my younger brother. But uh, when Dad came home from work, uh, we all ate together. Uh, no television. We sat around <laughs> the table, and after we got done, us kids would be restless to go do whatever and um, study or go outside and play. And Mom, we would, we would have devotions, and uh, we'd read Scripture, and uh, we had to memorize Bible verses, and we learned verses, and my dad wasn't much for memorizing, but he had a favorite verse, and we read it uh, today in, the, uh, in the Isaiah. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. That was my uh, dad's favorite one. He always could come up with that one. He didn't know many other ones, but that was one of his favorite. But at Advent time, we would have an Advent wreath, and we would light the candles, and... Um, there's different, there's different sort of versions of which candle, what they represent. But uh, the, the, the one I usually use is the one that calls the first candle, the hope candle. Was this the first one here? It was lit? Or this one? Bottle, okay. <laughs> this <is> the... <laughs> Pardon? Okay, the shorter one. Okay, I'm getting filled in here. So that's the hope candle. Today we have the peace candle. The peace candle, and then the pink candle is the joy candle. No. Yeah, okay. And the fourth candle is the love candle. Is that correct? Okay. And you all, we all know what this one here is, the white candle. is. It's a Christ candle, and we light that on Christmas Eve or, or Christmas Day. We light that one. So... The candles are a reminder that I like to think that Jesus, Jesus is the light of the world. In the Gospel of John, it tells us that, that he is the light, and the light brings, chases away the darkness, doesn't it? And uh, I have to learn that, because when you get older sometimes, especially men, we oftentimes have to get up in the middle of the night and uh, <laughs> head to the bathroom. And uh, I've had a few times when I didn't leave the nightlight on, and I try to wander around and stumble and even fall, and occasionally I've had some real difficult times. So just a little bit of a light chases away the darkness. And our lives without Jesus, the world in darkness, we're in darkness, no matter how educated or how enlightened we feel. If, if we don't know Jesus, then we are in darkness. But the one, just one little candle, that's all it takes to light up the whole, the room, isn't it? To make where everything's at so you don't stumble and fall spiritually. So Jesus is the light. And um, we like to light candles at supper. In fact, every time we have supper, my wife, we have lots and lots of candles. We like to turn the lights off and just have candlelight which is so neat. And I just wanted to um, share with you, actually, this morning I got up, uh, I always get nervous when I preach so I don't sleep very well. <laughs> I always thought I'd get over that, but I don't. I'm 81 and I still do that. And uh, so, um, so when I got up and had my breakfast, which I always eat outside, uh, and today, no, no exceptions, then I, I read my daily devotional. 
and I recommend that. I wanted to say that, uh, to recommend to everybody, uh, when you have, it's often nice to have, to read the Word of God daily, to set off, to get started in the day, and not just to read the newspaper. And we're back taking the paper again, but many times I used to read the new pa newspaper <laughs> and get depressed <laughs> and not read the Word of God. And so it's good to read the Word of God. But this morning as I read my daily devotional, it's the upper room, I thought, oh, this is really neat. I want to share it with you today, and it fits right in with, with our, uh, with our uh, Advent wreath here. And the lady that writes us is Devon Allison, and she lives in Florida. And she says, I look forward to worshiping in community with my local congregation. I particularly love the special seasons of the church here, and I most want to be in church during Advent. The songs, the sermons, the decorations, and the music herald the coming of our Lord. Last Advent, which I guess was last year, health problems kept me from attending service for several weeks. I felt alone and discouraged, even though I knew my church family was praying for me. Sitting at home on a Sunday morning and feeling removed from the holiday season, I did what always encourages me. What do you think she did? <laughs> she opened up her Bible. As I read God's word, I felt encouraged. I wasn't alone after all. I realize again that I'm a part of a larger community, the body of Christ, and that believers all over the world were joining together today to celebrate the Lord. And you know what she did then? She says, I lit my Advent candles, <laughs> played my favorite Christmas hymns, and celebrated the Lord's birth with my siblings in Christ all over the world. I like that. Siblings in Christ. We're brothers and sisters with a whole worldwide community of people who love the Lord. And then the prayer is, Dear God, thank you for the community we find in you. Help us to feel connected to all our siblings in Christ, especially when we feel alone. Amen and amen. <clears throat> And now at this time, we'll sing our Advent hymn on Jordan's Bank, The Baptist Cry. Would you join me in our affirmation of faith? The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, 
whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and him all things hold together, and he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. We're going to turn back to Isaiah here. As I was looking, this is the lectionary text uh, uh, for this Sunday. And, um, and be, uh, Pastor Dave had chosen that, and I decided to, to use that too. And um, before I just share a little bit about that, I, I thought it was very interesting as I, uh, the prophet Isaiah um, is, is one that's of many, many scriptures, many prophecies about the coming of Christ. And this is written probably five, 600 years before um, before Christ came, these prophecies. But I thought it was very interesting in my New King, I have to use the New King James Version Bible here. Uh, the, the commentary at the beginning of, of Isaiah, I thought was very interesting. It says, Isaiah is like a minister, miniature Bible. The first 39 chapters, like the nine books of the, uh, the 39 books of the Old Testament. There's 39 books in the Old Testament. And the thir first 39 books as chapters of Isaiah are filled with judgment about immoral and idolatrous people. Judah has sinned. The surrounding nations have sinned. The whole earth has sinned. Judgment must come, for God cannot allow such blatant sin to go unpunished forever. But the final 27 chapters how many books in the New Testament? <laughs> 27. Declare a message of hope. The message, the Messiah is coming as Savior and a sovereign to bear a cross and to wear a crown. And Isaiah's prophetic ministry scanned the reigns of four kings of Judah for at least 40, 40 years. So I thought that was very interesting. And our chapter 40 then begins with the words of comfort. After all, uh, the words of judgment for 39, uh, just for 39 chapters. And as you read, as I read these words, I thought, oh, all I could think of was Handel's Messiah. <laughs> and so much of this, so much of this uh, scriptures are found in Handel's Messiah. Truly, that's one of the most awesome works uh, that I've ever heard. And every year, um, I'd like to like to hear it. So last night, um, well, I was working on my sermon. <laughs> I said, oh, this, a lot of these scriptures, comfort, comfort, my people speak tenderly to Jerusalem, uh, and so forth. And, um, oh, uh, verse, um, the rough, 
the voice of one calling in the wilderness, every mountain hill made low, the rough ground will be made level, the rugged places a plain, and then, and then the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And I started wanting to start singing, and Allison started singing. I said, well, maybe tomorrow morning you should sing this <laughs> in the background. She said, no, she wasn't going to do that. <laughs> you remember? And the glory, the glory of the Lord will be revealed. Okay, stop. <laughs> and all mankind together will see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And, um, and there's other... Um, he tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. And um, when I was a child growing up in Minneapolis, uh, we were uh, we were in a Lutheran church. We and we were in a we had a youth choir. And every year we looked forward to singing. We did the we did the Hallelujah chorus. We did Handel Josiah practically every year. And then we got to sing with the the big people and our choir. We would wear our I think they were red robes, and the choir had white robes, and we all sang together, and sometimes we'd have a or little bit of an orchestra with it, and it was so awesome, it just sort of shivers up my spine to hear those, and to hear the end with the, the Alleluia chorus, which I didn't realize wasn't really the end of the of Handel's Messiah, but we always ended it with that, and um, so it's, it's, it's very moving, this scripture is very moving, but I wanted to sort of uh, highlight the verse that I just read, the 11th verse, and I really entitled my sermon, uh, Jesus the Good Shepherd. He tends his flock like a shepherd. Let me read it, he, uh, I'm reading it again. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. We have a little grandson now, he's 15 months old in Minnesota, and we haven't seen him for a while, but we do FaceTime almost every day, so we get to see him, and now he knows, uh, our daughter says he knows about 40 words now. And, um, and one of our favorite ones is, he, uh, he's learned sign language, I guess, when you put your hand over your heart like this and sign, it means, help please, he say, he'll say, help, help please. He puts his hand over his heart like this. And I thought, he gently carries him, Jesus says he carries him close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. We have a wonderful Savior. We have a wonderful, wonderful Savior. And uh, this Advent time, then, is a time to reflect on that. And I enjoyed listening last night as I, Allison put on Pastor David's sermon from last week. And I usually don't, how many of you take sermon notes? I should do that very often. I often type to forget. I'm, and David, he did a wonderful three-point sermon last week. And I never learned, I never really learned how to do it. Too undisciplined, I guess, to learn to do a three-point sermon when I was in seminary. They wanted us to do that, but I had a difficult time. But I wrote them down last night and David talked talked about the three R's. Do you remember that? The time of reflection, the time of repenting, and a time of renewing. And he talked about reflection as a time of remembering, of waiting, and, and Advent is a time to sort of slow down our lives and to, and to uh, reflect upon our lives and upon Jesus and what he's done for us. So I thought uh, that was a... a I was doing a lot of remembering that as I was sure, thinking about that and uh, what, what Jesus has done for us. And, uh, and then he mentioned renewing our commitment to Christ and talked about reading the Word and reading the Bible. And uh, I don't know about you, but many times it seems when things get difficult, sometimes it's hard to pick up the Bible. And sometimes I feel angry at God and want to blame him, and uh, so, and then usually things don't go very well. When I, when I get away from God and from, reading, and from praying and coming together that way with him. But then he also mentioned that renewing our commitment to Jesus uh, in, in terms of obedient uh, service to God and uh, the Christian life, and I, we, I really enjoy this, said it's not give me, give me, give me, but it's use me, use me. It's remembering how blessed we are that we receive so much. And um, I was thinking also as I was reflecting back on going to church as a child and my relationship with God and even celebrating Christmas and looking forward to that during the Advent season. 
And I remember when I was very young, all, all you would look forward to at Christmas was the Christmas presents under the tree. <laughs> and wondering what I was going to get. <laughs> and, uh, and looking at presents, and <clears throat> we, I don't know if we ever really opened them beforehand, but we were tempted oftentimes to do that. But then later on, as I, in my teenage years, and we always had to buy presents for everybody, cousins and all that, and mom would help me make up a list, and we'd go out of the downtown. We didn't have any big malls, and we went downtown and shopped, and uh, we'd buy. Sometimes she'd go with me, other times I'd go myself. You had to get a pair of socks. You had to get grandpa. Usually, grandpa to pipe tobacco, <laughs> and, other, other, and you just buy little presents like that. But then there came a time when I started, when people opened up, I started feeling the joy of giving, of the joy of seeing somebody else open a present that I had bought for them. And there was a real joy that came from that. And I thought, you know, Jesus said it's more blessed to give than to receive. And I think in our lives, if it's all just give me, or uh, give me, give me, give me, then our lives become very shallow, and we we lose uh, Thanksgiving, and we don't, um, our lives don't go well. And so, in the spirit of Thanksgiving, then we can share, we can give, we can experience the joy of the Lord through that. But Jesus said. I am the good shepherd, and I want to read, and when it says he tends his flock, I was thinking of Jesus' words that we read in John chapter 10, and let me turn to that here. Your very familiar words to all of us, I'm sure. John chapter 10, beginning at the 11th verse. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired man is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. And then we go to verse, um, let's see here, verse uh, 27. Jesus says, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one, he repeats that, can snatch them out of my hand. I and the Father am one. Jesus is the good shepherd. And you might sort of call that almost a oxymoron it's sort of like when jesus talked about the talked about the good shepherd i mean the good samaritan who, who took care of the man that the the priest and the levite walked behind walked beside and didn't help the man who had been injured and robbed but the samaritan the one that was an outcast that was despised by the jews he helped the man out and so, and so he, we call it the good shepherd. Well, it's sort of similar with shepherds. I didn't realize that shepherds uh, were not looked upon as very, they were looked upon as sort of uh, the outcasts in society for a number of reasons. Their occupation was not considered, it was a useful, important one, but it was not considered a, a one that was uh, very prestigious because for a number of reasons. One is the shepherds were not, they had to tend those sheep seven days a week. They were not able to follow all the Jewish laws, the ceremonial laws, and so they were looked down upon uh, for that reason. And then, um, and for other reasons too, being with the sheep. So the shepherds were sort of, um, well, like maybe garbage collectors or other things like that, or Jesus Day tax collectors uh, that work for the Roman government, they, they were not looked upon. Uh, they were looked down upon. And so the Gospels give dignity to the shepherds. And it's interesting, uh, who, did the, uh, who, who did the angels announce the, the coming of Jesus to, besides Mary and Joseph? But who, what was the first ones? It was the shepherds, wasn't it? We read in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, the very familiar Christmas story, that, that the angels came. Let me turn to that here. And it says, There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. 
I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people today in the town of David. A Savior is born, born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. And when the angels left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this is what, what has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them, about the child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. So you know, the shepherds were the first evangelists, weren't they? God took those that were despised, and they were the ones, the first ones to spread the word about Jesus. Even before the, the wise men, the rich ones brought their rich gifts, the shepherds, the lowly shepherds. Interesting how the, Jesus and uh, God turn things around, lift up the first shall be last, the last shall be first, and takes the, the common, the simple things, the things that are uh, despised perhaps, and, and gives worth and meaning to them because they are loved. So it's interesting that the shepherds then, they were, they were the ones that brought the gospel to the first ones to, after Jesus' birth. The shepherds hear it, and they are the evangelist. And so it's interesting that Jesus is the good shepherd, and he reaches out to us. We are the sheep. And as you know, sheep are not, not considered to be very smart. They wander off and oftentimes have to get, in, they get into trouble, and the shepherd has to come and rescue them and uh, take them back. And the shepherd does that. He loves them. And even if the 99, the parable, the 99 sheep that are in the fold, if one is lost, the shepherd goes after to find that one. Each one is valuable. Each one. Each life is valuable. And uh, no matter what person, what they have done, no matter how notorious a sinner they are or whatever, they are loved by Jesus. And therefore, because Jesus loves them, we must love them too. We must reach out if we're to be uh, friends of Jesus, if we're to be his followers. If Christ is in us, then we want to see the Christ in others. Even if they don't know the Lord yet, we can be a one to be the gospel to them. Maybe that's the only gospel they'll ever see. The only is in us. And so it's contingent upon us. It's a great responsibility that we have then. And we can't do it in our own strength. It's only through the power of the Holy Spirit, isn't it? Jesus, Paul says, not Christ, it's not me who lives, but Christ who lives in me. It's Christ that comes into our lives and changes us and gives us a heart of compassion for others to want to reach out, to want to touch, and, and to forgive, to forgive even our enemies. How difficult that is. Forgive, it's difficult to forgive friends, family, or those. It's easy to hang on to hurts and things like that and to feel sorry for oneself. But to forgive, how difficult that is. I was just reading in the newspaper yesterday about a man in France who was uh, who had gotten uh, actually he had gotten beaten up by the police and uh, they arrested him and uh, and we're going to charge him and then they didn't realize that they actually accosted him in the in the front of his house and he went inside and he had security cameras they didn't know that so they were caught and it shows them beating this man for like six minutes. And he was very, very, he's still having surgeries, all kinds of things, 41 years old. And, um, and the police, it's sad to say, they, they lied. They said he had attacked them and he had not. And, uh, and so now uh, there's a great uproar in France. But I thought it was interesting, his response to it. Here he is, he was having surgery, uh, on a broken tendon in his arm, torn tendon, et cetera. And, uh, he didn't want to. You could tell he was willing to forgive. He didn't want to, to you know, say that all police are like this. He said, no, that's not true. He said, I have police that are friends. And, um, and you could tell by his attitude that he was not seeking revenge, that he was not one that was uh, obviously he's hurting, 
but he was, you could see his forgiving, you could feel his forgiving spirit by what he said. And he didn't want people to come out and to cause harm to others because of this, even though it went viral on, you know, on the internet and all that sort of stuff. And I thought, oh, that's compassion, that's love, that's, that's the kind of Jesus uh, that, that we have and that as Christians we should have. And I don't know, I don't know his faith, I know nothing about it, but I thought it's a very Christ-like response that he had and how difficult that is for us. And so today, as we, as we focus here on, and this is the peace candle today, was, Jesus is the peace. There is no peace without Jesus in this world. Even all the trials and tribulations, we can have no peace until it begins in our own hearts. And so Jesus wants us. He wants us to follow him. He wants us to love others. And he wants us to be peacemakers, not just lovers of peace, but people that reach out to others to make peace and to be one that doesn't stir things up, but one that tries to calm things down and to bring peace and joy. And Jesus is that one. So we look forward to celebrating Christmas, even though it's very diff different this year, very difficult. I know when we can't all get together and, and we're missing that too. We were, we were just the two of us for, for Christmas. But you know, uh, we talked to our relatives, friends, and, and, and children in Minnesota. They told us not to come. But we had, we had a good Thanksgiving anyway because we were connected uh, with God, with Jesus. We were not alone. And so perhaps the same thing will be this Christmas. Very different, but it's very hard. So I pray that uh, today that uh, as we look forward to Christmas that, uh, that we sh don't complain, but that we give thanks for all of Christ's gifts to us. Amen. Shall we pray? <clears throat> Lord, you are a wonderful Savior a very loving and compassionate God who loves us so much that you're willing to go to the cross to die in our place, to take our sins upon yourself. You were innocent. You had done nothing wrong, and yet you were crucified. And then you were raised from the dead to the, and by, the, by God the Father and live, and you're our victorious and risen Savior. And Lord, we're so thankful for what you did for us that you didn't respond in kind, that you said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You didn't seek revenge, but you sought to turn their hearts to you and to God and to love. And so, Lord, we pray that thank you for your love and your mercy, your grace that forgives us. And now as we come ready to celebrate your supper, Lord, I pray that you'll help us to forgive anybody that we hold anything against. And or if we need to ask forgiveness for someone else, that we'll ask for that, Lord, that you'll help us to be reconciled to one another through the body of Christ. And we come together now, not just as individuals to celebrate the Lord's Supper, but we come together, whether we're here or at home, wherever, we're together spiritually to celebrate uh, your death and resurrection and to celebrate the life that you've given us through your broken body and through your blood. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence here. Thank you for all your many blessings. Amen. I invite you now, in the name of Jesus, to come as we celebrate the Lord's Supper together. And most of you, are, uh, just a few of us here, most of you are at home, and, uh, and we pray, pray that, you, that you will join with us. Uh, if you've got a chance, maybe you've gotten a little bread together or some juice or whatever. <laughs> if it isn't grape juice or wine, if orange juice, whatever, <laughs> you have water uh, to celebrate the Lord's Supper. And we do that on a regular basis in, in our uh, church here. And most churches I have served, we usually do that once a month on the first Sunday of the month. We come together and celebrate the Lord's, the Lord's Supper together. Because why? Because Christ commanded us to do that. He commanded us to do that when we, got, when we get together to celebrate his, so we remember why we are there. And so we, we come today then, uh, and we come as sinners, and we come unworthily, the only, uh, and we come because we don't deserve it, but we come because we realize we, we are sinners. If you come and think you don't need it, then you're coming unworthily. You're not coming with the right. But we come humbly. We come 
acknowledge in our sins and that we cannot save ourselves, and so we come to the supper. And if you'll uh, join with me in our prayer of confession as we confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to glory of your holy name. Amen. Remember on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he, said he had supper in the upper room with his disciples, and after supper, he took the bread, and after he blessed it, he took it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. And then after supper, also, he took the cup, and after he poured some into the cup, and after he had blessed it, he said, Drink this, all of it, all of it uh, for the sake of of, for the remission of your sins, for the new covenant, drink this as a new covenant in my blood for the remiss, for this remission of your sins. So, so, so we do that because Christ commands us. So this is the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, broken for you and for the world. This is the body of Christ, broken for you, take and eat. This is the blood of Christ, shed for you and for the world, take and drink. Shall we pray? Lord, we give you thanks for strengthening us at your table. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, again, for your gift of salvation. Thank you that we can participate in your body and blood. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving us, for setting us free, for giving us the peace that passes all understanding. Amen. Now would you join me in singing our Advent hymn, Savior of the Nations, Come.
receive the blessing of the benediction. And I'm sharing this from Hebrews chapter uh, 13, verses 29, 20 and 21. Now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, the great shepherd of the sheep, to the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God go with you. Amen.